you're about to listen to is brought to you by Kingdom Message Interdenominational Ministry. But the Lord incline your heart to His Word as you listen. Amen. If you are full of, if your mind is full of positive Christ imagination, you will bring out Christ. If your mind is full of fear and you are dominated with thought of bondage, I am telling you, that is going to be your physical experience. It is not a new thing. You are, you are the product of what you imagine. That is what we are saying here. So if the, God is going to do anything in your life, if any miracle is going to happen, if you are going to exercise any faith, what you are going to do first is God changing your imagination. Why so many of us has not been able to receive that which God has done is this problem. So we are trusting God to see, proceed today as we pray now. The topic for today is be single-minded. That's the topic. Be single-minded. You see, under the power of imagination. So this be single-minded you see under the power of imagining christ power of him that's a team but topic for today is to be single-minded shall we bow down our head to talk to the lord father we thank you for this evening we bless you because you are our helper you you love us so much you are so unique father we appreciate your mightiness please lord send forth your light that me and my brethren we understand your depth and you will transform cleanse our heart from every ungodly and natural thought and we will be dominated by the kingdom imagination in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, grant us wisdom and the grace to edge out every negative and carnal thought that always conflict with the word of God in our heart. Please do something to our life so that you can get results with our life. We know we are limiting you. We know we are not working the way you expected. But no, Lord, we know this change can start from our thoughts. Holy Spirit, transform us from within, inside out, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So, you are welcome once again. Let me make it, make it clear to you. <clears throat> we are still under the topic of power of imagining Christ. And the, I mean, the team. But the topic under that that we want to look at today is to be single-minded, single-minded. Um, what so many of us does not know, as I was saying during the review, if God is going to perform any miracles, if you are going to live any victorious Christian life, if you your life is going to be signs for signs and wonder. Even if you are going to make the kingdom of God, what the word of God must do to you first <laughs> is to change the way you think. What do I say? Eh? Eh? You must change the way you think. Um, can somebody quickly help me read or you bring it up in the screen? Um, the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, NLT, NLT fashion. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. 
You can live with me in any fashion. It's very, very key. This area, I am trusting Holy Spirit to do us good today. So, um, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, in any fashion. God bless you. Don't copy the behaviors and the custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Just wait there. I, I hope I hope you can just pick these scriptures in energy. You place it on your bed. So every morning, you are going to be looking at it, meditating on it. He said, don't copy the behaviors and the custom of this world. You know what? The world system, they've developed customs. they developed tradition. We, we, we were born into it physically. We grew in it. We were indoctrinated in it. It becomes a culture. We find ourselves. It becomes a tradition and a tribe we have ever learned. So we believe it. And so it has governed the way we live on a daily basis. So it's a behavior. Even though we consider some of it very interesting, we are praised for it. This system of cultures and traditions, there is a way, it's, it's, it's a knowledge of good and evil. They decide what is good. They decide what is bad for you, but it is from the tree of that knowledge, that evil tree. It's from there, and so he said, "Don't copy." So that's why it is. You will think some of it are cool. He said, "Some of it are nice." It is already programmed in our brain that this is how to live. This. So when somebody even play for mm, 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 you, are not doing it. We will think we are doing something right. You see the same thing. Somebody who is playing foul, and we that we are living by traditions and custom of this world, we are just saying the same thing. So behaviors, is, that's why he said, don't copy the behavior. Does he say bad behavior? No. Does he say bad custom? No. Either bad or good of this world, don't copy it. He now say, but let God transform you into a new person. Can you see? Let God, and let me tell you, when you get born again, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So, we are already new in our spirit, 100%. But there is a transformation that must take place in our soulless realm. You know, it's a solid in our soulless realm, it's our mind. So, in our mind is a problem. Our spirit is 100% like Christ. But we carry the mind of Adamic man. We think along, we judge, we evaluate in the pattern of the behaviors and custom of this world we have ever learned. And that's why he said, let God. I wonder why he put let God. That is, we must allow God. If we don't allow God, the transformation cannot take place. Let God change you into a new person. That is a pattern, a species that is entirely different from this world. You see, now, how does that happen now? How does God change you into a new person? God wants to change us from bondage to freedom. How, God, how will God do that? He will do that by changing the way we think. God wants to change us from a sick person to a healthy person. How will he do that? By changing the way we think. God wants to change us from poor person to prosperous person. How will God do that? By changing the way we think. Wow. You see, many of us don't understand what the will of God is all about. You know, in that say, then you will learn to know God's will for you. When God changes the way you think, you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You see, God's will is good. 
God does not have past way for you. I don't know, some of you, you want to kill yourself with depression. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. God has a correct way for me and you. God is not the one bringing sorrow to you. He's not the one behind your predicament. But you see, when you don't think the way you think, you cannot know which is the God's way. And now, the emphasis of this passage is that allow God to change the way you think. And today, we are looking at to the matter of being single-minded. To be single-minded. What does it mean to be single-minded? You can see that our as a Christian, when you get born again, your heart is flooded with so many thoughts. I was telling somebody today, Bible never tell us to fight any war. The only war that he asks us to fight is a fight, a good fight of faith. He's not asking you to fight a witch. He's not asking you to fight the anything. What he's asking you is to fight a good fight of faith. Where is faith is born? Faith is born inside your mind. Inside you. And so, as this, as this faith is getting born, something contrary, which is a pattern of behavior and custom of this world, we want to kill the faith and make sure that it doesn't terminate and bring forth fruit. This has been the challenge of so many people. This is why in many of our lives, Christ cannot find physical expression and testimony. So, but the solution to this is until your mind is single on Christ, until your thought is fixed on the person of Christ. You see, most of you, you think it's a normal thing for you to be thinking bad, bad things. <laughs> you are going to a dangerous terrain. What killed Israel? Like why did they not get to the promised land? They, they, they saw miracle how God deal there with Egypt. They saw miraculous how the Red Sea parted. But honestly, their caca fell in the wilderness because their mind, they left Egypt, but their mind was not delivered from Egypt. So until your mind is single on the person of Christ, you cannot get the result. Can we go to the book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 22 to 23? Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 22 to 23. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 22 to 23. God bless you. He said, your eyes is a lamp that provide light for your body. Wow. When your eyes is good, can you read KJV for me? Change it to KJV. I prefer KJV. Uh, let me explain it through that. Thank you. KJV fashion. Okay. I read verse 22. The light of the body is the eyes. If therefore the eyes be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. The light of the body is the eyes. That is what gives light to the entire body is your eyes. He now warned that if therefore thy eyes be single, he said thy whole body shall be full of light. Verse 23. But if thy eyes be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore thy light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? 
is talking about how what you see. If you look, if you bring that two fashion together, I mean two facets together, it's telling you that how what you see has capacity to form you inside. And he said that what you now form and think inside, how it has capacity to dominate your life and determine what happened to you physically in your body realm. So that's why he's saying, if your heart is single, it's not outside Christ, one minute, inside, uh, inside Christ the other time, he said, if your mind is single, if what you are meditating upon is Jesus, <laughs> he said, your whole body shall be full of what? Full of light. It means, that's why, you know, what you, what you see, what you see, what you hear, can affect what you think. And what you think will determine your life, your behavior, everything that is going to be happening to you. You will think you are not the one, but it's what you think. You know, some of you think, <laughs> you think something just happen, happen. It doesn't just happen. It is a product of imagination. But if you think started from what you see, Either you see physically or what you see in the spiritual realm that form your imagination, it can determine what to bring forth. May God open our understanding in Jesus' name. I say, May God open our understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know why your image is so cold like this. Amen. Praise God. Let me show you another scripture. You know that scripture. We are moving. Um, Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5 to 6. Okay. Chapter 3, not chapter 4. From verse 5 to 6. Know that we are sufficient of ourselves. Look at this scripture. Know that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God. Verse 6. Who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament? Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. Read, let me check fast four and five. Fast four and five. Let me go to fast four and five. Okay. It says, and so trust have we through Christ towards God. Fast five. And now put it not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of God so if you look at fast 4 look at that fast 4 he said and so trust have we through Christ to God so he now said they are not they don't think fast 5 is now saying not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves Praise God. I pray that you will understand this scripture. They are experiencing of Christ. What it means to trust in Christ. What it means to be in faith. Is to begin not to, is not to imagine yourself. Not to see yourself in yourself. That is, I am not sufficient in myself. I don't think anything as of myself. But I see my sufficiency in Christ. You see, 
Many of us are born again. But we are not delivered. You still think of yourself in Adam. There are two pictures of, of a man. Who you are in the flesh and who you are in Christ. I'm talking to the born again Christian. If what dominates you, even though you are born again, and you can pray very well, and you can fast, but what dominates you is who you are in yourself, sufficiency of yourself. The picture you have about yourself is yourself. The imagination that is going on, what to think is your identity in self. You have not been heard to see yourself in Christ as your identity. I tell you, you cannot live victorious and prosperous Christian life. What do I mean? How do you think about yourself? So many of you, even when God has delivered you from sin, if Satan, you still see yourself as natural human being who can sin. If you agree that you are a sinner, you can sin. You don't see that who you are in Christ is Christ. Hmm. First John 5, is it 417? He said, as he is. 417. He said, as he is. So are we in this world. You don't feel your thought with that imagination. That as Christ is, that is the way I am. Do you know the way some of us think? You, you see yourself short. You see yourself unable. And that is the way you will remain. Until the Lord is able to help our heart to change from thinking of sufficiency in ourselves. Why so many of you are legalistic? Is this sufficiency in yourself? And Satan will always be telling you that you are not sufficient. And that's why I propose it for us. We don't think ourselves to be sufficient in ourselves. Some of you, you see, carry the picture of yourself in Adam. You carry the picture of your ability in Adam. Jesus has not become your ability. What you are thinking every day is a picture of where you come from, your education, what you can do, your past. You don't see yourself, this is cleansed, this is saint, this is blessed, this is delivered, this is glorious, this is in sitting in heavenly places, this is favored. You don't believe that. You don't allow that thought to finish, to, to occupy your thought. The hearing is the love of God made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. I believe that many people will not have boldness in the day of judgment. If you want to carry to the presence of God is the thought of yourself. I say, hearing, I'm, I'm reading first John 4 17 now. Hearing is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. <laughs> Until you allow Christ to form your imagination, form your identity, form everything about your life, you cannot even face God with boldness. Because on what ground do you want to face Him? Your own self righteousness? You will fail. So, what do you think of yourself? When you are thinking about yourself in Adam, you are saying you are sufficient to yourself. You don't want to accept the faith of the Son. That as Christ is so you are. When they talk something, I recall which Amy are you talking about? I look at Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I am crucified with Christ, it's no longer I that live it. He talk about who I he said the life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That is, I live by the faith that I am now a son of God. Accepted in the beloved. He said, I am crucified with Christ. The first arm is old. This is a nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. That's Galatians 2.20. 
Do you live with the consciousness that Christ is the one in this container? And that's why you, we, you see yourself unable. You see lack. So many of you now, you are seeing lack. Hans has said you have increased fair price. Fear has grabbed you. You have calculated your salary. You limited yourself. The way the Israelite, in the, in, I think, uh, uh, in the book of Psalms, is it 40 or so? I don't know. I've tried to remember. He said, they limited the Lord of glory. You are limiting God by your physical circumstance. Because you have thinking yourself, sufficiency in yourself. You don't agree your sufficiency is in Christ. And so you can't live a supernatural life. You'll be limited by the worldly information, by what is happening to them. If famine dominates them, famine will dominate you. You will not be able to operate in faith. You will see yourself by their economy. And you'll be complaining. But look at what Brother said. I'm crucified with Christ. <laughs> I don't. The person that has cause, that has trouble, that is important, that can be key, is gone. He said, Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. He said, The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. How many of you imagine that you are a son of God? Did something used to pay me in this ministry. We have taught you this life, but I discover that some of you, you've not gotten it. You think we are joking. We are enjoying it. When you are shouting, shouting this time now that uh, they say things, things not hard for me because there is no, there is no that kind of life in the kingdom where I belong to. It's a life of abundance. He said he has come to give me life, life in abundance. So I, I, I try to change the way I think. Say no. I have about that. Even when the situation is speaking negatively, I don't let it tie me down. I don't let... We, the way I'm thinking is different. Some of you, price of a thing can throw you into a worry. You can be worried. You can, you can, it can throw you off balance. Any announcement of government policy can throw you away because your imagination is still fixed on yourself in the flesh. And Satan has power on whosoever is operating in Adamic, in his thought, in the flesh, he will dominate you until you come to a new creation reality. That Christ is the person. Is, you are just a container. The Holy Ghost indwelling you. The totality of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is indwelling in me. Say, how can I be stranded? I can't. Even when there are things, talking, talking nonsense, and you will not be moved. And that's why when you look at that uh, last second Corinthians we read the other time, verse 18, he warned us. Some of you, you know that scripture. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. When you look at it, when you look at what he said, look at it. He said, But we all, with open face, can you see? Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. What do you behold in your mind? What do you behold? You know what you behold in your mind? There, you know we have them. There is a eyes in our mind. <laughs> Whatever that eyes is beholding by time can dictate your life. You see, but we all with an open face, beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord. You are saying, oh, see the way the Lord is. That's the way I am. The Lord is beautiful. The Lord is good. The Lord is nice. You are beholding as if you are looking at a mirror. Who do you look at in the mirror of your mind? Are you looking at sin? Are you looking at the world? Oh, you are imagining Christ the way he is. That's the way you are. He said, when you begin to look at the Lord, the glory of the Lord, then you are changed into the same image. Time. You will be changed into the same image. It is effortless change. From glory to glory, we have different level of glory. You are changed into the same image. They are talking about the image of Christ. It, you can't change until you start beholding the Lord. You are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Who is a changer here? The Spirit of the Lord, not you. But some of you, you want to change yourself. 
So if anything is going to happen in your life, you want to live a victorious Christian life, start building Christ in the Word of God. Start meditating on the Word. How how Bible has described Christ. We were doing devotion this morning. Something just hit my mind. And so, you see, I, I see, I'm still thinking of, about it, even to this evening. The, the, the ten leper, they came to Jesus. They are asking Jesus to heal them. And Jesus did not pray for them. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the Pharisee. He did not pray. He didn't start praying. He said, go and show yourself to the Pharisee. That's what he said. That's all. And they also believe. Because in the land of Israel, a leper is outside the city. So if he experiences healing, the first thing before he can unite with his people is to, sorry, go and show yourself to the priest. Is to go and show himself to the priest. If he has, if the priest has not sent, uh, sanctify him to be whole, oh, to be made whole, that he will check every of his finger, his leg, everything. When they check everything that is okay, is truly in, they will now do some religious purity, and they will tell him, "Oh, now you can start living with people." But what occupied my own thought is that Jesus did not start praying; he didn't blow tongue. They tell Jesus will heal up. The next thing Jesus just said was, oh yeah, go and show yourself to the priest. Jesus saw their E. They also they took the step of faith by going. They did not ask, why should we go and show ourselves? Why should we if what of if we get to the middle of the road? Or we get to the high priest and the leprosy is still there. They will not even allow us to enter. But they believe the word of Christ. They took step of faith. They were moving. How many of us are like that? Unbelievers are even there, the Samaritans. How many of you believe Jesus like that? When what Jesus said about you in his war, do you allow it to dominate you? Is it, ne- is it not negative? Negative. How many of you that the word of God has said you are blessed with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places? And meanwhile, there are contradictions around you. There are deaths that are staring at your face. Will you move forward like those ten lepers? They move forward. They did not see before they believed. They move forward by faith. Along the way, the miracle happened. Okay. That means they value the word of Christ beyond their physical circumstance. Do you follow what the, the God's conclusion about you in Christ than what you are experiencing now? Is it not what you are experiencing now that is making you to say, hmm, when something is not told, hmm, you don't understand. So that is what I was thinking. I said, Kai, what the aspect that even moved me more is how Jesus did not even pray and say that, go, you are here. You are here. Ah! He just speaking with authority. Go, go and show yourself to the Pharisee. You are already here. May the Lord give us a revelation and knowledge of Christ in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will give us in the name of Jesus. So, building yourself in the flesh will produce carnal, negative, natural imagination of yourself. It's a very dangerous scenario. What fill your thought today? Is it Jesus? Is it not failure? Is it not how you will calculate? Is it not how you will work something out? Or you are believing that I am receiving what he has worked out for me. I am believing that that is who I am. Is it not money? How much you have allowed money to, 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 to define your status? Christ is not your status. Your balance is in your account. is your status. If it is low, you feel depressed. If it is high, you have temporary happiness that cannot produce you joy. <laughs> uh, your faith and your imagination. 
your faith and your imagination works hands in hands. Listen to that. I say your faith and your imagination works hands in hands. If your imagination is not Christ, is not the word of God, <laughs> you cannot exercise any faith. Your faith and your imagination works hands in hands. In fact, to be honest, your imagination will determine if you are going to develop faith or not. There are faith in the negative direction and there are faith in positive direction, which is Jesus. If you have faith in the negative direction, which is fear, <laughs> I am telling you, it is because of what you imagine. You can get focus. That's where I'm going. On your Christ identity. You can be narrow-minded. You know when they say somebody is narrow-minded? Your mind can be narrow. You can narrow everything in your life to who you are in Christ. Even though the world, you will look odd to the world. When you narrow everything, they are talking, you just put, you put Christ to it. Some people, when they say, eh, don't prove spirituality in this, ah. I am spiritual, so I have to bring spirituality to everything. I must bring Christ to everything. Any situation that is telling you don't bring Christ to it is bringing you into a defeat life. Christ, you must narrow your mind and your action to Christ. Oh, yes, you cannot pursue God's will for your life. If God said go, if you don't narrow down your mind, one thousand and one thing, Satan will introduce it to, to divert you and to distract you. So, and that is why you must let the word of God paint the picture of, of the possibility of Christ in your heart. And that's why you must feed on the word of God. When uh, Joshua was, God, how will I succeed now? He said, I should take this land for this one. How do we delete this people? How do we remove all these giants? The Jericho, the high, the uh, land of Philistine, every one of them who are occupying our land. And you said, this our land belongs to you. How do I? God said, nothing. But meditate in my word. Day and night, you will have a good success. One thing, is to read the Bible. Another thing is to meditate on it. If you don't preach us and meditate on the possibility on what Christ has done, on your identity in Christ, you cannot live a victorious Christian life. If you allow Satan to plant in you, you allow him to plant failure, to plant sicknesses, to plant cause, it will start manifesting. Some of you, you will go to social media and go and be looking at signal. Some of you, you allow us to, to be telling you, this is the signal of this thing. This thing is already coming. And you accepted. What does the Bible say about your head? We equally quickly believe the report of medical more than the report of God. And I said, to this, which report are you going to believe? You know, some of you, you are so sensitive to the signal of infirmity that you are sensitive to the word of God that determine your head. That is it. And that is why you are getting sick. Whatever you are conscious of will determine your life. Some of you, you are not conscious of spiritual prosperity you have in Christ. You are not conscious of fruitfulness that is in Jesus. You are conscious of dryness, of signal of Satan's time. Even when you are feeling it, your feeling is not you. Whatever you feel is not the fact that you are feeling something. That is not who you are. That is physical feeling. Spiritual control, physical. How does the old things in the world in the first place? Look at um, uh, Hebrew 11 fasting. Let bring people level for silicon. You see, because why so many Christians fail is what you imagine. 
Why you fall sick regularly is what you imagine. How the cause of your family and your, your father's house, your mother's house, how they come upon you is what you imagine. Your earthly family. Because you are imagining you are still there. Now, look at it. Through faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. So that the thing which were seen were made of things which do appear. Were not made. Okay, the thing which are seen were not made of things which do appear. All the things you have seen today now, it is not from what you see. Some of you, you want to see before you believe. You will collapse. Who told you? Some of you, any Igba, 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 who told you you can you are not a millionaire this time? Around? You are blessed. This time I will be successful. This time I'm successful. And you I'm doing well. Why are you negative minded? Why do you allow the history and the news of the world to dictate your imagination and equally dictate your lifestyle? Don't you know that even the whole world, according to this scripture, were framed by the word of God? Why don't you imagine the word of God? Why you imagine the word of God? <laughs> you will see that it will give birth to Jesus, to what is true of Christ. You be, you will give up to it. She will give up. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. What you imagine, mother? So if you allow Satan to fill your heart with failure, with sickness, with causes, all these things will dominate your mind. Some of you, you are very negative about your partner. Listen to me. Married people. If you allow Satan to bring, to sell a thought of the weaknesses and let the weaknesses of your partner dominate your mind, my husband is this, my husband is that. Even though when he is misbehaving, think right. Bible never tell you to fix your mind on his negativity. You will see that changing will start happening. The reason why your partner has not changed, you are the one. You are seeing who he is in the flesh. If you look at uh, 2 Corinthians, I think 5, 16, say we see no man after the flesh. 2 Corinthians 5, 16, how do you see your wife? After the flesh, who sees in the flesh? And that's why you say, hey, this, Yahweh man, tomorrow, uh, Yahweh man, all of us used to do it, we need to repent. Yahweh man, Shabbat, hey man, Shabbat, what you are seeing, you are seeing her in the flesh. You are seeing putting her back in the flesh, she will be manifesting flesh. But you don't see Jesus inside her. When the word of God has sworn us, if we are for any soul, no, we know man, after the flesh. You are seeing no here after the flesh. Though we have no Christ after the flesh, yet now so, no we in no more. They also made mistake. Now we have made mistake in the past about how we relate with our past partner. Change it, you will discover our life will start changing. But all those records of our misbehavior that we have is what we'll be using to relate with that. It, it is what has freed our imagination. Instead of discovering that Christ is inside this one, let me change the way I think about that. Not only our evil partner, even our relationship with other people. Once you begin to form a strong goal of thought concerning a person, you won't change it. It's wrong. And this brother is a Christian. He's a Christian. You are committing what is wrong. He said, we know no man after the flesh. You are, you are knowing after the flesh. Even though he's weak, even though he's manifesting that thing, Begin to imagine Christ in him. You see, what you imagine will be, will be your confession. Before you know, that person will start changing. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. <clears throat> I, I want to say that when Satan wants to get you, he will just bring a dream to delay you. A negative dream. Some of you, you are living by your dream. When a negative dream come, hey, what mula shadura? What? Oh, All those things. For God's sake, listen to me. Do you know who you are in Christ? If really, if if you see yourself be tied in a bondage in the village, do you hear the word of God that said in Colossians one thirteen that He has delivered us from the power of darkness? And has translated us to the kingdom of the Asian, which is my past. That's me, person in Christ. 
You don't fix thought on that. You will now begin to see one gym. We are masquerade is pursuing you. We are you try, 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 you can't get result. And that has been the reason why you are running a task -keter. Since you have been running, what have you got? <laughs> a brother this morning said, I came to the end of myself. I, 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 I have fight, I'm tired. Then I said, now that you are tired, you can embrace grace. That is it. Because of what you feel your mind is. You allow Jim, Jim, Lassen, Jim, Lassen, that if you, if you, if you are full of activity of the day to develop your gym, word of God is what must develop you. Some of you went gym, you believe so much, you give attention to gym, more than what God says about you. You will have forgotten. You now begin to imagine dream. Which dream? Satan can derail you. If he can succeed to plant your dream in your thoughts, he could use equally the economic challenge to throw you into a worry. You will just be worried from day and night. You'll be looking at your balances. You are gone. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let's look at this uh, rich uh, tsunami woman. I don't know if I can read it now. Second King chapter 4, verse 8 to 37. But let me tell you the story of the woman. This woman has an encounter. The tsunami woman is a very rich woman. See, you can read it when you get to that's second king chapter 4 from verse 8 to 37 but i will just give you the download because of my time the sunai woman is a very nice woman she was not doing anything for elijah because of what she wanted to get from elijah but uh, she, she saw elijah going passing through their way and so they will say come and stay in our house they, they like to entertain visitors she and the husband are very rich so as the the Elijah used to stay, passing through there, giving them maybe drink and some other thing. He, she now observed that Elijah is a man of God. She talked to her husband, let's prepare a chamber for this man of God. Anytime she passes, she'll be passing a night here. Okay, it's not even because of the miracle. And uh, they prepare that bed and everything for the man of God. So Elisha and Elijah uh, uh, Gehazi, they used to sleep there. Anytime. And she will cook good food, take care of the man of God, everything. So one day, Elisha was saying, why is this woman doing this thing? What can we do to this woman? Hey, is it that we will tell a matter to the king or to the captain of the host so that, that we can say, okay, this we have a woman, it's one eye, it's one eye woman, it's not an Israeli, doing all this kind of thing. Oh, and why? They were just thinking about that. Gehazi, by our observation, said, well, I have observed that this woman has no baby, and they are old. And Elisha said, go and call her. And by the time the Shunammai woman came, and Elisha just said, the Lord, by this time next year, you are going to bring forth your baby. <laughs> the woman laughed, my husband is old. What are you talking? No, put me in another thought, Jare. Well, she agreed with the man of God. Exactly by the time next year, she bring forth. And the baby was growing old, coming up, the boy become coming up. As the boy was playing with his father in the, where the man was doing his business one day, enemy hit the boy and he fell sick. And the father took the boy to his mother. That's how the boy died in the mother's name. And the mother did not even tell the husband. He just go and lay the boy inside the room prepare for the man of God. Lay, it, lay the boy on the bed. After he has laid the boy on the bed, he just asked, please, Oga, give me one horse and one Sabbath. Say, I'm coming. Uh, the husband says, is it where? The woman said, it is where. Can you see? The, you, when your only son died, the woman will say, it is where. It is the way she think. Why the woman go, pa, 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 pa. The Elijah saw her. Something must have happened. Gears, go and meet that woman. Meet her on the way. Tell the woman, what is happening? Oh, Paul is where? The woman said, it is where. Can you see the woman of faith? <laughs> Some of you, if you see something now, you go scatter, scatter. If you don't have money in your pocket, now everybody must know here. You will make noise around the world. It is where? Because that's all Old Testament believer. And she's claiming faith. It is where my circumstance cannot define me. I am where the death of my son is not my situation. 
I believe. And when she now, she didn't tell anything to Guyasi so that Guyasi will not finish her faith. When she now get to where the man of God, she said that leg. So man of God, where I told you, go for leave me, take care. But now the baby has, has died. They, they gave the rod to Guyasi. Guyasi cannot perform the miracle. Later, Elisha himself came and the boy rose up. But the emphasis there is that see what was coming out from the mouth of the woman. Won't the woman be crying? What makes you cry? Do you see the woman crying? Answer me from your scripture. Prasad, was he crying? The way you are acting is your imagination. The woman did not allow the problem to dominate her. What dominated her was the fact that that boy will rise, if I can see this man of God. But what? She said, that cry, hey, who, ha, ha, sick woman sympathy, and baby, begin to make noise. Begin to... So what is dominating your heart? If you allow your circumstance, physical circumstance, if you allow what men are saying, some of you now, you say, this is what somebody say. This is what, you are counting on it, you are imagining it. You allow it to dominate your life. Satan will trap you. Your mind is not single on what God says about you. Your mind is not fixed on your reality in Christ. It is your physical reality. You are, you are talking about, celebrating. Ah. Satan will trap you. May Satan not trap you in Jesus' name. I said, may Satan not trap you in the name of Jesus. So what do you face your thoughts on? What engages your mind? Check. That's why you must stay, you must decide, be deliberate in listening to the reality of the gospel to engage your thoughts. Or else Satan will plant something there when you sleep. God help us in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? I want you to talk to God this evening. Lord, please help my life. Let my mind be single on you. Change my imagination. Let me begin to imagine who I am in Christ. Let me feast on God's word. Not on negative circumstance. Not on what a man has saying about me. Holy Spirit, let your reality dominate my heart in the name of Jesus. Take away worry. Take away fear. Take away fear of failure. Take away what men are saying or what men says about me. Men's opinion about me. So many of you, you imagine what men says about you, not the word of God. And that make you not to be free. You mind, you even dress for men. Father, help us to change so that Jesus, identity Jesus, will dominate our heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we thank you. Please help every heart that has listened to this message to get transformed. Help their hearts to be single on you. So stop beholding nonsense. Who they are in the flesh, but rather who they are in Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe you're blessed with the message you just listened to. For more messages like this, kindly subscribe and follow us on all our social media platforms. YouTube. KMIM online Facebook Facebook.com slash KMIM online Telegram KMIM.ng To support and take part in this ministry kindly like and share Also for prayer and counseling call any of the following numbers plus 234 80 64 25 9285 Plus two three four seven oh six four three seven one one 
0302-834-8130-902252. Visit us also on our website at kmim.ng. Thanks and God bless you. Amen.